All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook uh, Solutions here. You have Unit 3, Circular Motion and Gravitation. The section is 3.M, Gravitational Field. All right, so now you're going to understand where our, like, 9.8 meters per second squared comes from. Um, that gravitational um, field that you're feeling exists from this thing called gravitational field. All right, so check it out. Before we work on this, because the first one's asking us to derive the equation for gravitational uh, g due to the planet, we're going to um, start with um, what Newton gave us, okay? So, here you go. So, Newton realized that the force of gravity on an object depends not only on the distance, but on the object's mass. In fact, it is directly proportioned to the mass, as we've seen. According to Newton's third law, when Earth exerts its gravitational force on an other object, such as the moon, the object exerts an equal and opposite force on the Earth. Because of this symmetrical symmetry, Newton's reason the magnitude of the force of gravity must be proportionally to both masses. That's how they got both masses, okay? Where M, E is the mass of Earth and M, object, are the masses on Earth. And the other, respectively, R is the distance from the center of the Earth to the center of that object, okay? So here is a figure of how that looks like, all right? Okay, so he developed the law of, gravitation, um, of gravity, right? The gravitational field. This is the Newtonian mechanics definition of the gravitational field and is what we're going to assume to be true for this class, okay? And this works 99% of the time, okay? All right, Gravita um, every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is proportionally to the product of their mass and inversely proportioned to the square of the distance between them. This force acts along the line joining the two particles. The magnitude of the gravitational force can be written as the force of gravity is equal to g, which is the gravitational constant. Mass 1 times mass 2 divided by r squared, which is the distance between them. Okay? g is just a gravi um, gravitational constant. All right? Okay. So, um, deriving this equation, all right? So, from here, what you can do is, uh, this is something that you are given in the formula sheet. You have this version. You have F, G is equal to force of gravity, right here, is equal to gravitational constant, mass 1 times mass 2 over R squared. This force of gravity is basically going to be the second mass, right? as it feels by gravity, okay? Or you could also say here, likewise, you can say that gravity is basically the gravitational constant, mass one, divided by the R, which is your radius, squared, okay? This behaves the same exact way. All right, so let G be the gravitational field of the Earth. You're going to drive an expression for the gravitational field on Mars without plugging the values, okay? We know that the mass of Mars is one-tenth that of Earth, and the radius, the diameter, is also one-half that of Earth. This also applies for the radius as well, okay? So you could write here, if you would like, <laughs> the radius of Mars is one half that of Earth. Okay, same thing here, all right? That's just what you can conclude, all right? So let's just do this. Okay, so the acceleration due to gravity on Earth's surface is related to its mass and the Earth, okay? Like what we have here, okay? So this is the gravitational field, the gravitational strength to G, which is on Earth is going to be equal to g, the mass of Earth, over the radius squared, the radius of Earth, and this is squared, all right? Okay, but we know that right here, it says it, 
right here. Mass, the Mars, is one half tenth of Earth, and the radius is one half that. Okay? So let's look at the gravitational field of Mars now. Right? It's G, and we know that its mass is one tenth that of Earth, so we can write it one tenth the mass of Earth. And we know that the radius is also going to be one half the radius of Earth. And again, that is squared. G is the gravitational constant, right? Good. So we could pull out some values. We could pull out the 110 here if we would like. So we have 110 here. We have one half here, right? Times G. Um, this is M Earth. Oops, sorry, the squared here. So the so the, the squared times one half becomes one fourth. So this becomes uh, this is a better way of writing it. G one tenth mass of Earth over one fourth radius of Earth. That's a horrible way. Earth and this is squared, All right? So. All right, we have one tenth over. We have we have one tenth divided by one fourth. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember this, but one tenth divided by one fourth is the same thing as one tenth times four over um, one. Right? We flip it when we multiply. Multiply it across four over ten. Okay, this is how I got this. All right, I know a lot of you don't remember how to multiply or divide by a fraction. Okay, when you divide by a fraction, you um, you flip this. All right, so this can be simplified to make g wait four tenth g mass of Earth over the radius of Earth squared all right okay and this is the gravitational field on Mars all right so you can say here in in English right you can say that the uh, gravity on, um, on Mars is Four tenth the acceleration of gravity on Earth. I should capitalize my proper nouns here. Okay, there you go. And we know that we know that the let's say our gravity is um, ten meters per second, right? Okay, it's normally 9.8, but I'm just going to round. So if it's one fourth, you can say, right, that means that the gravity on Mars is approximately, is roughly four meters per second. Okay. Let me just write that for you here. Roughly four meters per second squared. Why? Because remember, on Earth, Gravity is on G Earth is uh, approximately 10 meters per second squared, right? G Mars is right, 4 tenths times the G of Earth, which is 10 meters per second squared, right? That's how you get G Mar. Gravity of Mars is equal to 4 meters per second squared. Okay, that's just the math for this, if you don't know how I got it. All right, so you would say here, a rock is dropped 2 meters above the surface of Mars. Does that rock take longer or shorter? Okay, well, look at the gravitational field. It only pulls it 4 meters per second. So you would say that the gravit the, 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 uh, acceleration in the vertical right is um, on Mars is only 
4. Okay. I don't know how to write the unit, so 4 meters per second squared, right? Okay. All right. Okay. The right. That means it will take longer for it to fall, which is the change in the vertical, right? Due to uh, the weak mm, acceleration. Okay. All right. There you go. So the acceleration is only four meters per second squared. Therefore, to if it's given the same distance, it's going to accelerate. It's going to take a longer time because again, it has to cover more distance. Sorry, the same distance, right? Um, here's the visualization, all right? On Earth, on Earth, right? Let's say here's the height. Oh, that's a horrible height. Right? So here's the object, right? It goes down here based on 9.8 meters per second, right? Let's say the time is equal to like uh, 10 seconds. I'm just going to round, right? Okay? Now, if it's going to cover the same height, but now do you see the acceleration is going to be 4 meters per second? So it's going to be less, right? It's going to be less, right? All right, because again, it's going four meters per second. <sighs> Come on, four meters. Yep, because it's going four meters per second squared, four meters per second squared. Okay, so your time is probably going to be what? Like, I'm just going to guess 40 seconds. Okay, longer. Okay, same amount of vertical distance, right? The same amount of vertical change, but weaker acceleration. So it's going to take more time. Okay, so right, the mean it would take longer for it. Okay, so that means mathematically, uh, time is going to increase um, when acceleration decreases. So, this is the sort of idea that they're getting time is going to increase right here when acceleration decreases, all right? So here, uh, a student looks up this formula and they got this formula, okay? You're not going to derive this, okay? Um, but they would like to say if this equation is reasonable, all right? And it's actually very straightforward to actually look at because all you care about is what? Like what we said here, the change in the vertical okay as time time is going to increase when acceleration decreases all right okay so let's take a look all right so here it says regard on this equation does it make sense all right so let's look at the equation t is equal to the square root u h g over m r squared nothing else here matters so i'm just going to erase this just for the sake of this you just look at the height okay just look at the height everything else is trash let's see if this makes sense okay all right so if the height if the time increases will if the height increases, what happens to the time? The time will also increase. Does that make sense? Yeah, height increases, time increase. So you would say, yeah, this equation makes sense. Okay. So here, briefly explain the reason why. So um, the height, the height is in the uh, numerator. Okay, <laughs> I find it how to spell it. So the height is in the numerator, right? Okay. 
And that means it is directly proportional proportional to the time. That me okay? So when the height increases, the time increase. Okay? That makes perfect sense, right? Okay? Makes perfect sense. Exactly here. You have more height, you're going to have more time. So it works. Okay, it's going to make sense once we do the next problem. Okay? So this works. What about here? Look at this equation. Look at where the height is here. Okay? So t is equal to the square root of r. Why do I always keep going diagonal? r squared over 2gmh. Okay? Ignore everything. All right? Ignore everything except for the height. Okay? Because that's the only thing that we care about in this case. Or you could analyze it from the height's point of view. 1 over height. So here's the problem. The height is in the denominator. Okay? Right? Okay? This equation says that when height increases, so this bottom increases, what happens when the height increases here? Because it's in the denominator, right? This, the equation says that, that when the height increases, the time will decrease. Because the height is in the deom is in the denominator, right? If you don't see it, this is what I mean. Here, let me show you an example. Watch. T is equal to the square root of 1. Make this a very small number, a half. What happens to this number? You divide by half, square root of 2. Do you see how this number becomes bigger? So this is going to become bigger. Right? Okay. Here's the problem. This statement is incorrect because when you increase height, when you increase height, which is vertical displacement, okay? right that the object the object will require more time to travel that vertical displacement because again there's no v here there's no v here right so it it travels at the same velocity okay so that's the issue okay so this equation says that when the height increases the time will decrease because the height is in the denominator. Here's your example. This statement is incorrect because when you increase the height, which is the vertical displacement, the object will require more time to travel the vertical displacement, which is wrong. All right? So there you go. All right? It works when height is on top because that means it's directly proportion, works really well, but when heights on the new um the denominator right doesn't work that well because it's not directly proportioned okay so there you go those are all your solutions